Okay, I told you guys I was going to show you how to condense and reclaim your alcohol without a chiller. Um, you can see kind of the running theme here is uh, operating without without spending money on a chiller. But anyway, the easiest way to do that is with a, just a basic coil. Um, and I've got a stainless steel coil here. This is a 3 8 by 25 foot. Um, and you can get these at, most of the brew shops have them. Um, they're pretty easy to get, pretty inexpensive. Um, and connected to that, I've got two lines. We've got our vapor line, which is the vapor coming in from the evaporation vessel. Uh, for the evaporation vessels, um, I'm just using the CRC filters 2.5s. Um, and on the connection line, I've got a cam lock fitting right here um, that just connects right up to the vessel. Um, and then we've got a check valve up here. So the important thing about the check valve is when you're evaporating, those vapors are expanding. And then when everything cools back down, if you haven't released the vacuum, um, it'll suck that alcohol uh, right back into your vessel. And so it's important to put a check valve on there. You can get these little guys at uh, US Plastics. Um, there's no spring in there, so it doesn't require any pressure. So that's, that's your vapor line. Uh, and then you've just got another line uh, that goes into whatever you're collecting your alcohol back in. Uh, I just got to have the original container here. Um, so the other thing that's important is the material that you're using to do this. So I'm using uh, PTFE. Um, when you're combining pure alcohol uh, with high temperatures, if you're using um, uh, PVC or, or any other types of the standard brew lines or any of those uh, mixed uh, blends, um, you can have leachables um, that'll get into your, your alcohol, which is not good. Uh, a lot of them can be poisonous. Um, and they'll, they'll travel into your oil and you won't be able to get rid of them, at least not very easily. Um, so make sure you're using compatible materials. The other thing is uh, keeping any metals that you have, um, stainless steel, And so basically you just fill this guy up with water. Um, water is an amazing heat sink. And so you don't need any type of ice, anything in here if you're starting at ambient temperature. Let's say ambient being 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, typically you could run eight hours straight uh, on 70 degree water um, without having it overheat to the point where it won't condense anymore. And then overnight it'll usually cool back down. Um, if you put bleach in the water, you can run it I mean, I was running mine for over a month uh, without ever changing the water. I put a little drain on it down here just to make it easier to change whenever I was ready to change it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it works, works fantastic. Um, I was running four of these guys for a while, and then it really just got to the point where space became an issue. And so that's when I moved to the system that I'm running now, uh, which I'll show you guys here. This is my current setup. So I'm, again, I'm using the CRC filters, 2.5 collection vessels here, or evaporation vessels. Um, I've got multiple setups. I just, I'm running banks of six, um, and I've got multiple setups here. It works out really well. Um, so the key thing here is the air-cooled condenser. And so this is what replaced the water. Um, and the way this guy works is um, you're evaporating. So I got it running right now. I don't know if, if we can see see it very well. Um, but all these guys are running. Maybe you can get a better view of it here. Um, and so each vessel is got a line um, and we're running up to the condenser. And there are individual coils in there inside of the shell that run into a collection manifold. And so we're draining it out there. And so this is completely air-cooled. Um, we've just got a filter here on the end, keep the coils clean um, with about, it's like an 1800 CFM. So it's sort of doing double duty. It's ventilating the room as well as cooling um, 
the alcohol and condensing it. Um, from there, uh, we're running down into our water removal system, the ethanol dehydration system. So this is another uh, CRC filters um, sells these guys. And this is, I've got the 25 pound capacity uh, column on this with 3A molecular sieve. And so no matter how dry you get your material prior to extraction, you're usually gonna get at least a few percent of moisture in it. And that collects in your alcohol over time. So what I like to do is I connect it directly up to my evaporation system. And this has got a downflow. Uh, it's all gravity, so we don't need any pumps or anything like that. Um, and it's it's got an upflow through the column. And so you're giving your alcohol a long residency time inside that molecular sieve to capture the water um, and get it all out. And it, it, it's really efficient. Um, gets it down to just fractions of a percent just in a single pass um, from there we just i've got a 55 gallon collection drum here uh, that's vented and this again goes up to the shell of our condenser and so we're venting everything outside any vapors uh, just get shot outside um, and so that's that's it that's the uh, system no chillers uh, really inexpensive um, just doing multiple of these guys I have probably saved hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment running this type of system.